In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to do uh, how to do wrangling and data visualization in R for spatial data. And spatial data can take many forms. Most of the time when I'm working with spatial data, it's related to points, which are measurements at a specific location or regions of some type. And there is a standard called simple features that allow different types of software to specify spatial data in a common way. And so we're going to focus on how to work with spatial data represented as simple features in R. And simple features are comprised of two different components. There is a geometry object, uh, for example, like a point, a polygon, a line, etc. And then attribute data associated with the geometry object. For example, for this geometry, you might have the temperature measured at a certain time on a certain day, if it was a point, you might have the number of new cases of a disease in a county in the last month, if you're talking about a polygon. But simple features are a common standard used to represent spatial data. And because they are common to different types of software, they're becoming increasingly popular for people to use in representing spatial data. So let's talk more about simple features. If you look at the vignette associated with the SF package, which is the primary package that we're going to be using for analyzing spatial data, simple features have a geometry that, that describes where on earth the feature is located, and they have attributes which describe other properties of the geometry. And there's some other details about the different kinds of spatial objects you could represent. You can represent regions, you can represent things like trees, you can represent uh, mountains, you can represent all kinds of things. Uh, usually, in, in, at least in the kind of data that I work with, usually it's just a point or a region of some type. But there's many complicated types of geometries that you can represent. So just to, to clarify, a simple feature has a geometry, which describes where the object is located. And the simple feature is also going to have attributes. And this is generally what di data scientists think about when they consider data. This is what they're usually thinking about uh, when they're thinking about data. So all geometries are actually made of points. So points are actually the most basic type of geometry. And then you can combine points in different ways to create more and more complex objects. A point can be two, three, or even four dimensional, at least in simple, the simple feature space. The most common kinds of points are two dimensional and are used to describe, used to describe a two dimensional set of coordinates. So think, think X and Y coordinates. So for example, longitude and latitude or easting and northing, if you're familiar with those types of coordinate systems. And in the simple feature world, two dimensional points are often referred to as X, Y points. A three dimensional point would, would include the X, Y coordinates as well as some other dimension or some other coordinate such as altitude. And so if you add altitude, that's known as the Z coordinate. And if you combine altitude with the X and Y dimensions, you get an X, Y, Z point that is three dimensional. There is another type of third dimension that is sometimes used. It is denoted by the letter M, where M stands for a measure, and it's some other measure associated with the point. Um, it's, pretty rare, it's pretty rare, but at least the authors of the SF package give the example of time, potentially, though that's usually represented in a different way, or a measurement error. I personally have not worked with data where they have uh, this type of third dimension, though I have worked with data that has longitude, latitude, and altitude. And if you combine an M coordinate with an XY coordinate, then not surprisingly, surprisingly you get a three-dimensional point, uh, and it's called an XYM point to distinguish it from an XYZ point. And you can actually combine X, Y, Z, and M coordinates into a single point to get a four dimensional point. And I've never personally used that, uh, but it is available in some really complicated situations.